Inside of the concentration camps established during the Second World War by the SS, there was a huge amount of suffering and evil. One of the camps established in the north, operated by the Nazis, was Sturthof, which was found to the east of the city of Danzig. It was set up after the invasion of Poland, and was used to imprison Polish leaders and many other people in society. But then as time went on it became a concentration camp, which became notorious for its evil, and inside were many female and male guards who were known for being executioners and killers. But the story of Sturthof is one which saw around 65,500 people never make it out of the camp alive, and the conditions there were truly terrible. Join us today as we look at the horrific evil at Stutthof concentration camp, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Stutthof concentration camp was set up to help with the Nazis' purge of the Polish elites, and before the war began there were lists drawn up of people to be arrested. Stutthof began life as a civil internment camp, which was overseen by the Danzig police chief, and it then expanded heavily. It became a labour education site, before it then became a concentration camp, but the original site was surrounded by a barbed wire fence, and it was rather small to begin with. The first camp had eight barrack buildings for prisoners, and a place for the SS guards to live. In 1943, a new camp was made alongside the original one, and this had a high voltage electrified barbed wire fence surrounding it, and it had 30 new barracks. Also added were a gas chamber and a crematoria, and mass executions and exterminations occurred inside of these. Mobile gas vans were also used to execute as many people as the SS could. Those who worked at the camp were SS guards from Germany. Later Ukrainians were brought in to help, but amongst the guards were women, or SS Avsarinen. Almost 300 women would serve inside of the Sturthof concentration camp, and less than 10 were ever brought to justice. The women were known for their evil, with women such as Jenny Wanda Barkman being known as a beautiful spectre, for the fact she sent many children and women to their deaths in the gas chambers. One other female guard that worked at Sturthof was her for Botha, who was a 6 foot 4 woman who was known as the sadist of Sturthof. She was seen beating inmates to death, but she was never executed for her war crimes, despite the fact the evidence was very much against her at trial but the first 150 prisoners were held there the day after the invasion of Poland was sprung, and many Jews also found themselves in prison there. Within the first few weeks of the war, 6,000 people were held at Sturthof. As time went on, thousands more people were transferred to Sturthof, with many coming from other concentration camps such as Auschwitz. There were people from many different countries held there, including Germans, Dutch, Belgians, French, Danes, and many other nationalities. In total, 110,000 prisoners passed through the gates, and the conditions at the camp were very tough and brutal. Because of this, thousands died from starvation and disease, with typhus epidemics causing chaos amongst the prisoner population. Those who were considered too weak to work were often killed inside the small gas chamber, but executions were also carried out at the site too. There was a firing range, and in here dozens of prisoners would be shot by SS firing squads, and also doctors and nurses, would execute inmates using lethal injections of phenol to the heart. The mud around the camp also became a weapon, and prisoners were drowned in this, and many were clubbed or were beaten to death by the guards. Lots of inmates were killed ultimately by the forced labour conditions there, and they worked in SS-owned businesses and also armaments factories to help the German war effort. But some inmates were marched each day outside the camp to go and work in local brickyards or in agriculture. But Sturthof became a site which became important to the German war effort and to armaments production, as an aircraft factory was even made there. Subcamps were created to help the German production too, and there were actually 105 subcamps established that fell under the umbrella of Sturthof. One former prisoner wrote, To the sounds of striking axes and crashing trees, a huge encampment is taking shape in the forest near the coast. Columns of emaciated men sag under the weight of bricks and iron bars. Huge pine trunks cut their shoulders, crushing them down to the ground. Encircled by barbed wire, a long row of barracks has grown out of the ground, cleared by the sweat and toil of the prisoners. The barrels of machine guns glitter by the frozen guards stand by, in the ice-bound world around. Even their breath forms icicles. Hovering above the camp are pulsating columns of smoke, as yet still the normal smoke from burning wood. There were two commandants at Sturthof, 
which was not many considering at some sites the SS swapped their commandants about. This means that they must have been impressed with the murderous antics of the camp leaders. Max Powley served as a commandant from 1939 to 1942, and he was then succeeded by Paul Werner Hopp, who took over until the camp's evacuation. But this began on the 25th of January 1945. As the Second World War had turned against the Germans heavily, Heinrich Himmler ordered the SS to ensure that not one prisoner was left behind and not one prisoner fell into the hands of the enemy or the Allies. Because of this, a large-scale evacuation of Sturthof began, and there were around 50,000 prisoners who needed moving inside the Sturthof site. The death marches were ordered, and inmates had to march large distances. If they could not keep up, they were brutally slaughtered by the SS guards, who would shoot them instantly. Some prisoners were marched towards Lauenburg in the east of Germany, but the Soviet advancement cut them off, and they were forced back to Sturthof. But three months later the prisoners that hadn't been moved were removed by sea as the camp was encircled by the Soviets. Many prisoners were forced to walk into the sea and then they were mown down by machine gun fire from SS soldiers. One barge of prisoners who were starving was later towed into harbour in Denmark and many of these were cared for inside of the country. The Soviets would liberate Sturthof on the 9th of May 1945 but they came across just roughly 100 prisoners who managed to hide during the evacuations. But then as the war came to an end in Europe, the attitudes came to punishing those men and women who were responsible for the crimes of the concentration camps. The Nuremberg trials utilised evidence at sites such as Stuttoff, but then other local and regional trials sought to punish those who worked in the different concentration camps. Poland held four trials against former workers of Stuttoff, and they were accused of crimes of war and crimes against humanity. The first trial occurred between the 25th and the 31st of May 1946 and on trial were 30 guards including a number of women. All were found guilty and 11 were sentenced to death for their crimes with the others getting prison sentences. More trials took place and more recently a trial occurred in November 2018 when a former guard, Johann Rebogen, was accused of being part of the killing process. At the age of 94 he was brought to court but was said to have later been found unfit to stand trial. But in 2021, a 96-year-old lady, Armgerd Fershner, was given a suspended prison sentence for her involvement at Sturthof, and the fact she was convicted of being an accessory to the murder of more than 10,000 people. But despite the trials, there were still very few people who were executed or imprisoned for their crimes at the camp. Even Hertha Bofa, who was mentioned earlier, was punished for her crimes at Bergen-Belsen, and her antics at Sturthof were largely discarded by the courtroom. But Sturthof concentration camp was a place where 110,000 prisoners were sent, and around 65,000 would never make it out alive. Disease caused chaos there, as did the SS guards, who inflicted such violence and barbarism onto the prisoners on a daily basis. It was a sight which was horrific, and it was one which was similar to other camps such as Bergen-Belsen and Auschwitz, with a huge killing operation in place. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.